execute! Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetrabit Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. After about 17 years since the final main entry in the Mega Man Battle Network series, we finally got a nice little legacy collection. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have every game in the series, but regardless, being some of my favorite games of all time growing up, you bet I was excited for this one. Now, I didn't want to just cover one game, so in this video, we'll be taking a look at some highlights from all six main series games, as well as a few from the spin-off titles. So jack in and execute that like button, it's time to find some Battle Network Lost Bits. Alright, so let's of course kick things off with the game that started it all for this series, no matter how janky it is compared to the future titles. So for starters, although in the final game Woodman is just found as an optional navi that you can fight by talking to Sal, originally it looks like Woodman was going to have a much larger role in the game. In the earliest currently known build of this game, simply known as Test Build, an evil version of Woodman would have been fought after the player had spoken to everyone at the school area. And then, as seen in some screenshots of another early beta version of the game, Woodman was actually going to then be one of Mega Man's classmates in school. And seeing as how even Gutsman and Roll are lacking here, he might have been one of the first navvies implemented into the game. Another screenshot shows that Mega Man would have seemingly started a net battle against Woodman in the school net area. It's hard to speculate exactly what was planned to occur from just these few screenshots, but some have theorized that maybe, originally, Woodman would have been the cause of the school crisis in the game before it was changed to Number Man. To add to this, leftover unused in the game are Overworld and Mugshot text box sprites of Woodman 2. In the final version of the game, since you only encounter Woodman directly after talking to Sal, these never get used. So these appear to be a remnant from those earlier builds where you could still find Woodman on the net and interact with him. Then we got a whole bunch of other unused graphics left over in this game, including sprites of both Chod and Male running, which end up going unused as NPCs just use their walking animations when moving faster. Then similarly, there are also unused dashing sprites for Mega Man where he gets much lower to the ground. Next, there are sprites for the cars seen in Dentown, which go unused, as there, the cars are only ever seen going at an angle. There's an unused alternate version of an NPC character. There's an early, much less visually impressive graphic for the Zenny. And then there's an unused animation for the ghost viruses, in which they would taunt the player by laughing at them. There are also unused animations for two viruses flinching when taking damage, the Metars, as well as the Volgear viruses. The game also has an unused completion graphic that's a leftover from an older demo of the game. What's extra interesting about this graphic is that it uses some older artwork of Mega Man, where there's a small blue gap between his ear emblem and his cheek. And as some extra trivia, this artwork is also found in the instruction manual for the game. And speaking of the Mega Buster, there's also this unused graphic that was meant for a dummied out Mega Buster battle chip. And apparently, this is found leftover in every main game in the series. Now this is another thing where currently fans can only speculate its intended purpose, but the going theory is that based on screenshots from earlier builds of the game where different battle chips could be set to both the A and B buttons, there wasn't another button for a default attack, so the developers turned the Mega Buster into a battle chip. And interestingly enough, this chip can actually still be apparently modded into the game. And although it says it deals 9,999 damage, upon use, it will literally just do a regular Mega Buster shot. So yeah, unfortunately, it isn't some insta-kill chip. And lastly, for the first game, there's an unused dummy out version of ACDC Town. In this parallel universe version, there's no music, no NPCs, the collision is sometimes wonky, and interacting with some objects will result in the game defaulting to some NPC dialogue, including one, uh, kind of creepy one. Some of the graphics are also pretty messed up, such as the squirrel in the park, as well as Higsby's shop, both of which sport some nice-looking numbers here. Now, there's not really much else to this place, but if you do try to enter any of the doors here, you will warp to what looks like the corner of ACDC Town. But now, there's no collision, and once the graphics go off-screen, they don't come back, eventually leaving land to just roam around in this empty blue void forever. Now taking a quick sidestep into the Network Transmission spin-off title for the GameCube, where the series returns back to its side-scrolling roots, there are currently only two documented graphics that go unused. One featuring some green binary code listed as End of Map 0, as well as this one featuring a city listed as End of Map 1. And as a little fun fact, this is actually apparently the Chicago skyline that's seen in this graphic. 
Then moving on to Battle Network 2, which was my entry into the series back in 2002, we got some more unused graphics. In addition to this alternate colored NPC, once again, we also got unused alternate color palettes for not one, but two other NPC characters. And similarly, there are color palettes that reveal purple and pink variants of the security cubes that are never seen in the game. Next, there's an unused graphic for a chip that's seemingly just static, and this appears to be something similar to what's seen in the Mega Man Battle Chip Challenge spin-off when a chip is destroyed. And then finally, there are unused graphics which appear to be placeholders for the battle tiles. These feature some really basic graphics for the regular tiles, empty hole tiles, cracked ones, as well as poisonous, magnetic, grass, and ice tiles too, leaving only the holy and lava tiles missing from this set. Next up, near the end of the game is a room that normally, as soon as you enter it, starts a cutscene, and as such, you can't normally freely walk around in here. But with the use of a map warp cheat, you can enter this area and move around freely, and by doing so, you can interact with the computer on the desk, which has a description that you otherwise can't normally ever see. Furthermore, entering this area earlier than you're supposed to will result in the game displaying the tutorial message that pressing the L button lets Lan talk to Mega Man. Now, before we move on to the next games, there's actually a debug prototype build of Battle Network 2 that was dumped to the public in 2016. This is an earlier build of the North American release and was made on October 16, 2001, so it's about two months away from the initial release of the game in Japan. As such, it's fairly close to the final build of the game, but with one major difference. As the name implies, this build still contains several working debugging features. This includes stuff like an object test menu where you can select one of the many objects in the game and scroll through different animations, see different sprite colors, change the background color, and more. There's VRAM test screens for both objects and the backgrounds, which will display which graphics are loaded in memory for both, respectively. The style test menu lets you edit the level and type of style that's equipped to Mega Man. The message test menu, of course, lets you view some of the messages seen in the game, but most of them are pretty buggy or they just won't show up at all, which was pretty weird. And there's also a flag test menu, which lets you toggle various additional debugging flags, like invincibility for Mega Man, disabling random encounters, enabling a free camera mode or allowing the player to walk through walls, enabling debugging info on screen, and more. Other notable entries on this menu include Yoshino, which boosts the player's Mega Buster to do 50 damage, as well as Koma, which allows you to slow down the game to 1 16th of the game's normal speed, as well as pause it and advance it frame by frame. Another really handy debug feature can be found right on the title screen, and this lets you choose a stage, area, and scenario which you can then instantly warp to. And this, of course, is really useful for getting to various areas of the game quickly, especially if you haven't played through the game yet. As far as debugging features in Game Boy Advance games that we've seen so far on this channel go, this one is pretty stellar. Now on to Battle Network 3, we once again got several more unused alternate palettes for various things like pink bubbles apparently meant to have been used for trapping Miss Mari and Mail during the Bubble Man section of the game. There's a red version of the Guard program, an unused red overworld version of the Alpha Bugs, the unused alternate security cubes are also back again from Battle Network 2, and then for the Twin Viruses, there's unused palettes for an also unused state for them where their eye would seemingly charge up and glow yellow. The green Omega form of the Twins normally has a yellow eye, but the other forms normally use a different palette where their eye color is closer to their main color. And finally, for alternate colors, there are also sprites for two unused versions of the Navi Ghost NPC characters, one green and one black, as well as several recolors of the bug styles that are never normally seen. The other unused graphics from this game include Dr. Hikari Sr. facing away, which is never normally seen as he doesn't turn around in any of the cutscenes where he appears. And then there are also some unused graphics for Mr. Famous, a set of sprites for an animation of him seemingly adjusting his glasses, and then a sprite of him slumped over, looking down with his coat starting to slide off. Based on this dejected state, I reckon this might have been planned to be seen after defeating him in a net battle. And speaking of Mr. Famous, there are also a few unused things regarding his Navi Punk. Unlike most net navvies which you fight in the game, Punk normally doesn't have an Omega form, but an Omega form is still found in the game and can be re-enabled, resulting in Punk starting with a whopping 2,000 hit points. And furthermore, there's also unused AI data for Punk that contains a normally unused attack which can be re-enabled as well. 
This attack would have seen Punk using his rollout attack, but instead of rolling around the perimeter, Punk would have rolled at an angle and would have bounced off the top and bottom boundaries. Then, much like with the previous game, here by enabling the ability to walk through walls or warping to a room, you can get to several normally inaccessible areas in the game. And once again, interestingly, there are a few objects in these areas that can be interacted with and will result in some very basic messages that aren't otherwise seen, like a desktop computer or just a chair. Then in some areas like the server room, which is normally only seen during cutscenes, if you roam around this area where you normally can't, we can also see that although you're never meant to see this far, the map is fully complete. And lastly, to add to the unused buster chip that we discussed earlier, there are several additional unused chips for default moves like this in this game which each use the same graphic. There are C-, Guard, and Reflect chips which are for pressing B and left in a fight to bring up the shield, and then the Delay chips are for charge attacks of the element or effect in the given name. Now sidestepping to the Battle Chip Challenge spin-off, there's currently only one graphic that's documented as unused, and it's this faded out graphic of Mega Man's emblem. This was seen used in some screenshots of an earlier build of the game tiled as a background, and I guess this is just a leftover from that. Next up we got Battle Network 4, which despite being the highest selling game in the series, is often regarded as being pretty mid. Either way, we got some more unused graphics here, go figure. Although the yellow and blue card graphics from Battle Network 1 reappear in this game in Elect Town, despite being still found in the files, the pinkish red cars are never normally seen. Then there are two unused placeholder NetNavi icons just featuring the numbers 18 and 19 respectively. There's an alternate blue version of this NPC, and then there's an unused green variant of Gutsman that's thought to have been another color scheme for his Omega version. Next, we have this overworld sprite of Sparkman, seen in his normal color palette, which goes unused since the only time an overworld sprite of Sparky here is seen is the blue-tinted hologram during the City Battle Tournament. And speaking of the tournaments, there are unused battle sprites of the pink normal Navi left in the game too, suggesting that these female Navis might have once been planned to appear in the tournaments instead of just the regular yellow ones. Then, although mystery data is seen during some battles in this game, they are only seen in the green color, and that leaves the blue, locked purple, as well as otherwise never normally seen orange mystery data unused. It's possible that this orange one is what eventually became the rare yellow mystery data that was introduced in Mega Man Battle Network 6. Now next is a strange unused preview graphic of ACDC Town with some messed up coloring. And when recolored to what it was probably intended to look like, we can see that this appears to show an early design of ACDC Town, as here we can see some different trees, Male's house has a different shape, and there's a different layout of the area found behind Land's home. Battle Network 4 was also the first game to introduce dark chips to the series, and using them would slowly darken Mega Man's sprite, and not using them would lighten him up. And seemingly based off this idea, there are also darker and lighter sprites for almost all of the Double Souls, just not for the Proto and Aqua Soul. Using the Double Souls is disabled when the player uses enough Dark Ships, which explains why the darker ones aren't ever seen, but even if you get enough Karma to be the lighter, good Mega Man, the lighter sprites for the Double Souls are just never used either. And while on the topic of the Double Souls, data in the game appears to show two of them that were intended to be added to the game but ultimately never made the cut. A Duo Soul, as well as Forte Soul. Now according to Yuji Ishihara, who worked as a character designer for the series, apparently these two souls were scrapped due to time constraints as well as space limitations. Although there's not really much else for the Duo Soul, there's actually concept art of the Forte, or Base Soul, that exists, and ultimately, this soul was reworked for the Base Cross, which was originally exclusive to the Japanese version of Battle Networks 5 and 6. Interestingly enough, remnants of these scrapped souls can be partially re-implemented into the game, and will turn Mega Man's sprite into either a Metar for the Duo Soul, or just a white dot for the Forte Soul. Yeah. Unfortunately though, Mega Man's abilities with these remain the same, so there's not really much of a point to modding these in. Now on to Battle Network 5, I haven't really been going into the regional differences in these games, but I thought it was really neat that in the Japanese version of Team Colonel, Leonardo da Vinci's painting of The Last Supper can be seen on the cruise ship. So yeah, I guess Jesus is canon in the Battle Network universe. 
Now first here, instead of diving into more unused graphics again, there are actually remnants left in the game for wireless multiplayer functionality using a Game Boy Advance wireless adapter. Something that, despite being touted in the Japanese Team Proto Man instruction booklets, doesn't actually work properly. And these menus can actually still be accessed in non-Japanese regional releases of the game, though the text still will default back to Japanese. There's currently no known way to normally access these menus without hacks, and it's also unclear why the wireless multiplayer functionality was scrapped outside of just linking with Boktai 2. But of course, eventually wireless multiplayer was implemented in Double Team DS as well as on the Game Boy Advance in Battle Network 6. Now back to some more unused graphics, first are a pair of unused overworld sprites for Larkman in some alternate colors. These include his dark DS variant, as well as a version where the red and blue parts of him are seemingly swapped. Next, there's a similar car to what we've seen in previous games, only this time it's in black. There aren't any cars like this seen in this game, so due to its similarity, it's believed that this was an early version of the car that's seen when Nebula first pulls up to Scilab near the start of the game. Then we got unused light and dark blue palettes for Magnet Man, an unused color for the trumpet arm used for the Toad Soul to match the Chaos version of it which goes unused since that version uses the dark wide shot attack instead. There are unused graphics for Gyro Man's propeller spinning, seemingly suggesting that much like the Gyro Soul, his propellers might have spun when using wind chips too. Then there's a scrapped charge animation for an also scrapped mid-charge level seen with the Chaos Unisons. There's an unused shaking animation for the cactus viruses that was also seen to be part of their behavior in some official artwork. There are unused overworld defeated sprites of both Napalm Man and Tomahawk Man, which were presumably meant to have been used when defeating them in their section of the game's story. And then there's also this unused sprite of Search Man seemingly blocking an attack or something. And unlike the last pair, this time there's no equivalent sprite for the Team Colonel counterpart's Number Man. Then a pretty interesting unused graphic is for some unused orange battle tiles. Red and blue, of course, have been a staple in the series, but orange ones are never seen and currently their intended use is unclear. And lastly for the Game Boy Advance release of Battle Network 5, there are actually remnants of an unused tutorial for the Chaos Unisons, and this can actually still be hacked back into the game. The text defaults to Japanese and Colonel leads the tutorial regardless of which version you play on. And the text is definitely still unfinished as it features what looks to be placeholder messages. Ultimately, this entire Chaos Unison tutorial was scrapped in favor of just teaching the player via a simple email message. Now before moving on to the final entry here, we of course have to talk about Battle Network 5 again, this time in the Double Team DS form which not only saw both versions of the game on one cart, but also introduced voice acting, 3D graphics, and more. And for the first time in this video, we actually got some unused audio. These are all clips of Lan mentioning Multanic Man, the name those given to Napalm Man in the Mega Man NT Warrior anime adaptation of the series. Now these files all have an EU suffix, suggesting that they might have been intended for the European releases of the game. Anyways, let's give these a quick listen. Multanic Man! Let's do it, Multanic Man! Navi Change! Multanic Man! Double Soul! Multanic Soul! Chaos Unison! Multanic Chaos! Then, as far as unused 2D graphics go, there are parts of the texture for Mega Man's 3D model that aren't normally seen, and these are all of the instances where Mega Man opens his mouth. For whatever reason, be it difficulties in syncing mouth movement to the audio or whatnot, the decision was ultimately made to keep Mega Man's model's mouth shut the entire game. And lastly for this game, seeing as how they added a few 3D models here, it's cool to see that there are actually several animations for Colonel, Proto Man, and even Mega Man as well. For Proto Man, we have an animation of him seemingly pointing at the player with his sword, him doing some sort of wave. Then Colonel also has a wave of sorts, as well as an animation of him like turning away and showing off his cape. Then Colonel and Proto Man both have a pose for getting ready to fight. Then for Mega Man, there's an idle animation of him hunching over in a pose similar to what's seen in a net battle. And then there are also a few animations of what looks like Mega Man getting punched from the left, right, as well as in the middle. For these last ones, it's theorized that these may have been part of a scrapped mechanic where the player could tap and annoy Mega Man on the bottom screen of the DS, and this would cause him to react this way. And now lastly, we have the final main installment in the series, Mega Man Battle Network 6. And first up, here, Judge Man actually has a very interesting attack which was scrapped from his moveset. 
Basically, a text box would appear on screen and Judge Man would issue a command to Mega Man. And then, after doing so, an object would spawn and float around the map. If the player were to try and stick it to the man and disobey Judge Man's orders, this object will trigger and will warp towards the player, where it will then do a lightning attack both vertically and horizontally. And as we can see here, when this is modded back to work in the game, since the original graphics for the floating object were removed, the game defaults to using some other stand-ins like books, books with messed up colors, or just a P. Next, there are actually two unused virus types that were meant to have been encountered and registered for the game's Virus Battler side mode. These are a rare fan variant as well as a rare kettle listed in the game as Kettle SP. Although other Windbox type viruses can be selected in the mode, Kettles are not, probably due to how their HP system is structured differently using temperature. And lastly here, we yet again got some more unused graphics. There are unused animations for the Shrubby virus, as well as an unused animation for an also unused behavior for the Pulse Bulb viruses where they would have opened up and done some sort of scan move. There is an unused Sand Wind Sprite, and lastly there are a whole bunch more unused alternate colors for several objects. We got unused colors for charging up a chip, presumably one for each of the four major elements, an unused green version of the charge-up graphics used when holding the B button, there's colors for different elemental flames, there are several unused color palettes for a bunch of the game's NPCs, there are unused brighter colors meant to have been used for both versions of the Beast Overs, the differently colored in-battle mystery data graphics are back again. There are graphics of an unused blue lightning attack, which based on some pre-release screenshots of the game, appears to have been meant to be seen as part of a Lechman's moveset. And finally, we have five unused colors for the overworld versions of the Metar sprites. And on that note, that'll wrap up our trip here through the unused content highlights from the Mega Man Battle Network series. I've been wanting to make this video for years now, and if you've watched my videos, you might know that I use music from this series quite a lot, so yeah, happy to finally get this one out. I realize the Battle Network series is a bit more niche, so of course, likes and comments below to help with the YouTube algorithm are very much appreciated. Anyways, while you're here, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and be sure to subscribe to find your way back to the channel in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.